Okay, some of you asked me how I did this image um, when I posted it in our community and wanted to know if I do selections and then composite uh, my subjects into a texture. And I don't do that um, because I found I don't like the selection tool. Um, to me, it was very frustrating, especially when I first started trying to use Photoshop and oh it drove me crazy it would select some parts and not others and I couldn't and plus if you look at this image I have all these fine details that I think would be impossible to select and and move this image into an uh, on top of a texture or something so I'm going to show you how I do it um, I in on one I'm in on one photo raw they have a place where you um, you can upload all your textures and then there's a file of them right here. So this was um, the texture I used. Oh, now I lost it. Where did it go? Um, oh, here they are. So you just double click on them and then in different folders, these are all horizon type um, textures. And I use this one on this image. So I'm going to go backwards to how I did this. So I'm going to undo all these so you can see where I started from on this uh, image. So here's where I started. Here's the original image. And then I always duplicate it before I start working. So this is just a duplicate. And um, as you can see, I chose this image because it was sharp. Um, it, was a, it was pretty good exposure. Uh, the horses are in sync. I like that. I like the dust here. I like just the little bit of show of the plow. I thought, well, this is a great image other than the background because this plowing was not located in the best place, but it is what it is. So I thought, well, this I like this image to work on to, for a texture. So I chose this texture here to put on this image over the top. So what I do is I put the texture over um, the top of the image and I'm trying to I'm going to do it again here um, just to show you how I how I do it and then I can always redo the layer so I'm going to add this and add this texture as a layer and then it'll go and it added as a layer um, let's see if I can Oh, I have to get rid of this. Okay, there now it's added as a layer. And then what I do in uh, on one is I go to the, their move tool. And then when you click this, it'll fit it perfectly over the um, image. And then uh, what I do is I kind of reduce the opacity so I can find my subject. And I leave it at normal because I'm going to paint these back through the texture. This is how I do it. And so I, I reduce the opacity so I can find my, um, I'm going to close this, so I can find my subject. Then I go to the selection tool here and I um, adjust the brush so it's about 80%. Sometimes I'll go down to 70 depending. But, and then I always use a very, really nice soft feathered brush. And you can do, you have the selection tool in Photoshop too. You can do the same thing. You just put your texture over your your image and then you you would mask it through. So this would be painting. I'm painting um, the it says painting out, but I'm drawing them through this texture. So this is kind of I wanted to show you how I do this. So when the first pass, I just I don't care if it's I, I just get it all in there just to kind of see if I like the horses with the um, texture and um, just really quickly go over it I can change it later or fix it up be more precise later I just want to get an idea of what they look like in this texture so then I go and I put it all the opacity and I like the color scheme of the horses with this texture because they kind of match but if I selected it, and you see how they're floating here, they're not grounded. Um, that's what I don't like when people do composites. I don't want the, I don't want my subject just floating on the texture. They have to be grounded. So what I mean by that is, um, I'm going to take, I'm going to draw some of this ground in here, 
to um, to keep it in the image because if you look at the the where they're plowing from right up here all the way down there's no distractions this truck is is past the sand so I have all this area to work with I don't have to worry about things in the way if there was manure here I'd take it out before I did this but what I do then is um, is then you know this is what I do and then if I want to bring the ground in I would reduce the opacity of the brush say I don't remember what I did but low and then just bring a little bit in so some of the color of the texture is there um, but but it's not so bright like if I did like a hundred percent it wouldn't match the texture so I'll show you what I mean like this so here let me try this again um, uh, let's see if this this is at uh, like almost this is the color with almost a hundred percent and then if I reduce the opacity down to like 30 I just want some of the ground to show I'll show you the difference in the colors so then I go and I do this so you see this is just blends in and I it, it, I'd probably even reduce the opacity a little bit more as that's what I did but this is too much this doesn't match the background so this is better um, actually I would put even a little bit more in um, because I you know something like this even and then go maybe a little bit lower to get that ground I want the ground to show but I don't want it to be a different color of the um, texture I want some of the texture in there too and I like that the dust here from the texture stays and but then I just want to uh, kind of reduce get the ground to come out now not that much but um, you get the idea you kind of have to go back and forth and blend it and um, and then also I wanted to show you another reason why I like to pull my subject through is if I go to a hundred percent um, and we're gonna go up here and look for hair so then I'm gonna reduce the opacity of the texture and you see here this horse's um, forelock hair is here and I kind of like how it goes over his um, let's see I'm gonna go back up to the 80 percent opacity and I like the way his his mane is and this is all look makes him look natural so what I want to do is I want to keep that hair um, in my texture because it's and if you were selecting this this would be really hard and the same with this hair here I think I left those really fine ones out and then his ear the hair that's coming off of his ear looks natural too so I'll bring that in there and what I do is I paint over what I'm gonna keep so I can see and I probably would paint out a little I'll put the little bit more blending in here so I can see what I'm doing so you can see the I'm going over what I want to keep in and then what I do is I paint the texture back in around what I want to keep um, and I keep going back and getting that it takes a little bit of time but you kind of reduce the opacity of the texture and then you can get closer like the more you reduce the opacity of the texture the more hair you can keep and you just get close there so I'll show you when I do it like this and then if you just press and press really close with this tool and I don't know if Photoshop is the same it just kind of adds a little bit more texture and a little bit more texture until you get what you want sort of something like this and if it's not I just uh, paint it back out again and and do it again um, until I get it just how I want it to be so that I can keep this hair um, what am I doing painting in um, and and get the texture back in and so it looks natural and that's why you couldn't do this with the selection tool well maybe some people can but I sure can't and you can see a little bit of blue in there so I just keep pressing until I think it looks pretty good so if you go all the way up then you can kind of see how the hair is um, is staying in there and I would probably just keep playing back and forth back and forth until I got it just how I wanted Be between going painting in and painting out and just reduce the opacity even more 
as I get really more fine details and then eventually you'll have that hair so that's another reason why I I pull these images uh, the horses through the texture so that's just to demonstrate how I do it and then also I'd have to go and I have to do like these lines here so I would do a hundred percent find the uh, say this strap here and then I would have to paint go to the selection tool um, I would probably go up in opacity so I can see it reduce my brush and then um, start painting this out and I don't care if I at the first pass if I go over it because I can fix that but I want to get all that in there so I go over and then I come back and paint the texture back in at the edges and and I just keep doing that until I get a, a pretty good clean line and it's time consuming, but um, it, it works. And the same with this is even smaller. So I'll reduce, I'll reduce my size of my brush and just go down this rope. Oops. And believe it or not, I use a mouse. I know a lot of people like that. They use a pen, but I've just, I never had one with me. Um, I do have a Wacom tablet. I just never really took the time to get used to it. So I've gotten pretty good with using a mouse. So I just keep using the mouse. And see, then I'll go back and I'll fill in the edges with painting the texture back in just so I can keep, oops, keep the rope. And then when it gets really tight, like on the horse, then I just click and it adds just a little bit like that. And just keep working it back and forth until you have the rope and then I put the to see how I'm doing and then you can see there's the rope so that's basically that's how I do it that's how I draw I pull the the subject through the texture so I'm gonna get rid of this layer because I don't need it um, make sure I'm deleting the right one and and then we're going back to here so then this was my first when I first put this texture on and what I had here and I liked it um, but it's flat and a lot of times that happens when you just use one texture it gets very flat so I duplicated the texture uh, on this one or wait I duplicated the same texture again and then it got a little darker and I it defined the horses more and I really liked it, but I thought it's still a little dark. Um, I would still wanted some more um, light in it and more contrast. So I added a flare texture that I have. Um, that added some light over here. Um, the flare texture, let's see if I can show you what that looks like. Um, I don't know if I can. I, I guess I can't, but it's, it looks like this. It's just a sun and then dark, it goes darker as you go. So, um, but it added a little bit of, um, definition to it. And then what I do after that is I make this a smart, well, it's a, called a stamp layer. So it takes all the layers, stamps it, and then I make it a smart, uh, layer so that it keeps all the remaining layers below it so if I want to come back and fix something I can and what that does is enables me to go back and like I can go over to effects or browse if I want to oh add some some different effects to the the whole image or if I want to paint some local adjustments so like if I went here let's see um, so say I wanted to add some exposure or um, paint some local adjustments. I did that here. I added some, I did, uh, dodged it and added some, te you know, some detail so that the clouds had a little detail. And I could still come back and play with this image more. Um, it, to me, it, right today, it looks a little dark. See, a, a, the, a couple days later after you do something, you want to go back and look at it because sometimes you think, ah. Eh, I could use a little bit of something so I'm, I'm going to increase the midtones and you know I don't know there's a lot all kinds of things you can do in the development thing and then also in effects um, 
you can I it on one has all these different effects I could add a glow which I do a lot with my images um, I think I already added a glow like this looks dramatic but um, I, I, I got to before I do this I got to make sure oh yeah I can get rid of it um, but you reduce the opacity and this is how I get kind of a painterly look to it I go really drastic like this and then I reduce the opacity until it's kind of um, just how I want it and then you get more of a paint type look to the whole image um, I already did that in this image so I'm not going to do it again so uh, this is this is how I play around with my images in on one and then I can go back to layers again um, it'll take a while because it has to render all those things and then um, and then I'm right back here and I still have it and then I also in here I can um, it's going to render this again I guess then I can uh, export it and I can export keep all this in my hard drive all this information and then if I want to export this to to show on Facebook or somewhere else or for a print or whatever um, I can do that and I got my logo here and there's all kinds of presets you can do for exporting I think Lightroom has that too um, so that's what I do basically this is what I do um, to get my textures is I I pull the image my subject through the texture and then I start adding textures and adding effects until I get something that I'm you know kind of happy with so um, I'll probably do a course on this I did one before uh, but I'll probably do a little bit more advanced course on this in our community uh, in case you're interested in learning a little bit more in depth and how I choose the image what uh, how I process the image and you know different things you can do with uh, textures and uh, sometimes I don't always change the background and use textures. sometimes I just enhance a good photo with the texture and I'll I'll go over that too so but I just wanted to show you that I don't select my in, my subject I pull them through uh, my textures so uh, I just wanted to share that with you